Martin, we spoke earlier on about, I'd ask you about this kind of paternal pride that you have in, in the players. And I think of that, that goal, Cairns' goal against Leipzig, which is basically a goal made out of the academy. Callum takes the quick free kick, plays it out to James Forrest, he cuts it across, Cairns finishes it. And again, you sitting in the stand as a Celtic fan, but also having a part in that journey, that must be amazing to see. It's actually, you actually get quite emotional, believe it or not. You know, and if I'm watching the, the games in the house, you know, Geraldine, my wife, will be sitting with me, and, and I'll, it's always we Callum or we Jamesy or, or, or we KT, you know, and they're just boys and always will be. But as I said before, but if I just, when you touched on, on Callum, his big problem is that he's not got a Spanish name. If he had a Spanish name, then he would have been accepted an awful long time ago and, because he's remarkable. In the academy, kids got homework, Callum McGregor homework. So what, they, what they're asked to do, Paul, is to take charge of the TV channel changer in the house, in a Celtic match, at any point, just press pause, and you'll see Carl McGregor standing in space all the time. He's wonderful at it, absolutely wonderful. In terms of KT, there's never been a, a guy, I can remember through the camera, with such a connection with the fans, but I have got, I'm quite disappointed in one thing, and I'm Paul, if I don't mind, I know this is maybe the platform to tell you, but, going, <laughs> but he, he was the best, in, in 21 years at Celtic, he was the best at doing rainbow flicks. He just did them for fun. He was just brilliant at them again. And I've said to him, I don't know why he doesn't do it with the first deal. All I'm looking for is a wee rainbow <laughs> flick. I'm sure, I'm sure the gaffer would, wouldn't mind if it doesn't need to come off. But a wee rainbow flick and a volley in the top corner would go nicely, Paul, you know. He's got ability to do it. Because one of the things you told me, which is a, a story that the Celtic View also featured, was, uh, it was Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Comrie, who is a friend of yours, Kieran, who yeah. came through the ranks. He's now he plays with St Johnson. You came up against him. You were left back for us. He was right back. But when you were coming through the ranks, the two of you would kind of give each other motiva motivational speeches, saying, right, we're going to give everything we can to try and, try and make it, which, again, is, when you read that, it's remarkable, like, as a teenager, and, and obviously the two of you have uh, actually made it as professionals. Yeah, that was at a time we just went full time football and at that age people grow at different rates so we were always a wee bit behind and we weren't really getting a game, it was a lot of the, the bigger players at the time that, um, so we said to ourselves look, we're going to give ourselves the best chance here, we'll work work harder than all the players and look, kinda, if it will come we'll take our chance um, and we've done that in that season, we had a great season and both of us got new deals and unfortunately for Alan, he got let go, but he went to St Johnston and he's, he's kicked on from there and luckily enough for me, I stayed. So he's a great player and it was a pleasure to play against him as well. Because I always think one of the, as an example for the Youth Academy, obviously Kieran, you've come through the ranks and, and we got into the first team, Callum, you had a, a different, you had to go out and loan to Notts County, but I think as an example of going that route in order to benefit your Celtic career, you know, that's, that's obviously something that maybe young players can, can look to you and, and what you did there. Yeah, definitely as well. Um, you know, as you say, different players have sort of different paths. You know, KT came right in and, and he was off to a flyer straight away. So, um, you know, I was slightly different. I had to go away, um, get the experience, get the game time. And, you know, that really stood me in good stead as well. You know, you, you grow up as well when you're away, living on your own. You know, first time I'd been outside my mum dad's house, so <laughs> it was a nightmare, I had to start cooking. Um, but, you know, as you say, you, people develop at different rates and, you know, I, had, I felt like I had to go and get that game time and then when I come back, um, you know, I made my debut and I sort of got off to a flyer in the, the European games. And I suppose the two managers that have, have been key for, for both of you, obviously Brendan Rodgers in the last couple of years, double treble winners. Uh, I know you're not allowed to talk about it, but we can all hope that it's going to be a, a treble treble. But before that, Ronnie Dyla as well, who both, you know, brought both of you into the first team. And, and Cairn, that must have been important as well to have the, the Celtic manager give you that, that sense of that you, you were on the right lines. Yeah, Ronnie Dyla was, was brilliant for me. Because um, at the time I was 17, I think, and I wasn't even getting a game for the 20s. But he would always come down and watch his train. And he said to our coach, I love the intensity that Kieran trains at. And from there, he took me into the first team training. So I was training the first team and on the bench for the 20s. So it was like a weird situation. Um, but from there, I, I kind of grew confidence. Um, started playing the 20s and Ronnie Dyla seen what he liked. And I'm, I'll be forever grateful for what he's done for me. And he's changed my life and my family's. And can you imagine, it's hard to imagine the, the success we've had in the last couple of years. If you just list it, it's just absolutely extraordinary, Carl. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, the amount of trophies, um, big game, big game performances, big score lines as well. So, as you say, the, 
the success has been amazing in the last couple of years and, and obviously me and Kieran have been a part of that and you know we're very proud to be a part of the sort of club's history in terms of how well we're doing at the minute um, and you know we're just trying to work hard and continue that good vein of form. Do you think Martin as well that it helps having somebody like John Kennedy as part of the coaching staff because he's obviously another success story of, of our academy and you know if things had been different he may well still have, have been playing towards the end of his career. Without a doubt, he's, he's another great example of the, an academy success story, as you say, Paul, you know, to, and that's your, perhaps your next aim is to get a coach coming through from the junior academy all the way through to manage your first team. And you never know, John Kennedy could be that man to manage, it, manage your first team. He's doing remarkably well just now. He embraces everything within the club. Uh, any new initiatives at all, he's there to help out. So, for example, one of our initiatives in the junior academy is for kids to concentrate on their, their weaker foot, their less dominant foot and they, they awarded a gold band to wear to identify them as a two-footed player. Uh, and it's John every year who, who will present the gold bands and he's he's just a wonderful example to everyone. Yeah, great lad. Now, obviously, you guys, between you, you've got two songs that the Celtic fans sing for you, Kieran and Callum. You've got one as well. Why haven't we got one for James Forrest? Do you not, do you not feel sorry for him? Can you, can you not put a word in to your, to your pals to get a song going for him? Watch his space, will be one soon. <laughs> but have you ever, Cairn, have you ever been in the dressing room and, and sang the Callum McGregor song after he said a particularly good game? See, to be fair, I'm not even kidding on it. I think it was Hibs the first time they sang it, and I was singing it during the game. I was like, can't watch your song they're singing. <laughs> Just in case I didn't know the words. <laughs> That must be a bit weird because you're expecting your teammates to be shouting instructions to you rather than serenading you. Yeah, that's what I was saying, man. On. <laughs> shouting Callum McGregor back. <laughs> but I mean, how does that? I, I can't even. I don't think any of us can begin to imagine how that must feel when 60,000 fans are, are singing a song that they've made up just for you. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Um, you know, especially after the, the sort of European games as well, and I've like, scored a couple of goals, and you know, you hear the full stadium, it's rocking, and, and it's your name they're singing. So. You know, to, to actually for us to give the fans that much excitement that, you know, they're having these great nights and then when they're singing your name back, you know, the hair's near back in the neck, stand up and, you know, you start running a bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> and Kieran, I know, I mean, the odd time that you're not playing uh, earlier on this season at Farhill, if you're not in the team, you're just standing in amongst the fans watching the gate, watching your team, but they still would sing your song. Is that, is that weird, even weirder when you're actually, like, just guys standing next to you singing your, your song? <laughs> Aye, um, but I still love it all the same. Um, when I'm at the games, the boys give me a bit of stick for that as well. Like, you're not even playing, they still sing for you, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a special connection I've got and it's one that I'll, I'll cherish forever and it's, uh, I hope it never ends, to be honest. And one of the things, that you, obviously one of the highlights for you as well, is that a few times you've been lucky enough to put the, the armband on. And What was that like the first time you knew you were going to have to be the man to, to give the pre-match huddle talk? Yeah, I was nervous to be fair, I was the same as Cal's in the hotel room, like what am I going to see in here? <laughs> um, but obviously Bruni is the, the inspirational captain, so learning from him kind of set me up perfect for that night. Um, and on the night it was a great result for us, 5-0, and I got a goal as well, which made it probably the best night of my life at the time. Not only a goal, but goal of the season, to be fair. <laughs> Aye, it was, it was no bad to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Kieran just mentioned Scott Brown, who has been, you know, such a key figure for us for over a, a decade. And obviously, you know, even now, whether it's on the park or off the park, he's such an important player for us. Yeah, he's incredible. Um, I think I said that a couple of weeks ago as well. You know, he's he's such a big character. You know, he's especially for us sort of younger guys, Kieran and myself, and that that you know, he's he's tempo every single day in training. You know, he's he's at it. He's dragging boys with him. And you see that, you think he's the captain, so I'm following that example. And, you know, it's 25 lads all doing the same thing, so it really, really drives the standard up. He is the sort of focal point for everything, you know, on and off the pitch. Like you say, even if he's not playing, he's, he's in the dressing room, Gene every day up, and before we go out, making sure everybody's ready on time. And, you know, once we're out there, then he is the definition of a captain. And I suppose, his, you know, the, the very fact it's all about the team for him, the, the League Cup final, he didn't start, but then when he goes up to get the trophy, he shares that honour of lifting the trophy with Mikael Lustig, which I think says everything about him as a, a person as well as a, as a team player. Yeah, exactly. You've just said it there. You know, even though he, he wasn't playing, he's still he's still at the forefront. Of it. He's still a massive part of it. And, and as you say, that that humility to, to say to Lustig, all right, you you've played in the game, you can you can lift the trophy with me. So it's you know he's a top top guy. So just one thing I was going to ask you: Do you ever any of the players ever wonder why 
and particularly this time of the year when it's absolutely freezing and training and, and games that, that Kieran and Scott just that they don't you don't feel the the cold at all. I'll let you answer that. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be fair, um, you walk out of training that it's freezing. No, we don't deny that it's cold, but um, you play every week in your shorts and t-shirts, so you may as well keep it. And once you get warmed up, you're fine anyway. Well, so I tell myself anyway. <laughs> And just finally, we're, up, we're just at the point of almost wrapping up here. I noticed there's a there's a kind of young team from, uh, and I literally mean an actual football team. I don't mean a, like some sort of young team. But I thought it was your pals. <laughs> <laughs> um, from from St Caddox out in Newton Burns, and I think the, the coach has, has brought them. If the boys, can they stand up just to give us a wee cheer? <laughs> and just as an example, you know, is, is it, I know it's difficult. If there's one thing you can give, you know, a bit of advice for these young boys are just starting out in their football career and obviously they want to, to be where you are at some point? I think the most important thing is to actually enjoy playing football. Um, you know, everybody can say work hard, you know, work on your talent, but I think if you don't enjoy it, then, you know, that's that's the biggest thing for me. I think, you know, Kieran will probably say it as well, that when you're actually out on the pitch, you know, it's the best time of your life, so you've got to try and enjoy it as well and, and everybody will say, like, work hard and, and things like that, but for me, I think the most important thing is to, is to enjoy it while you do it as well. I suppose, Kieran, you, you see, you know, the team at that age and it takes you back to when you were just a young boy coming through an academy and maybe looking at first-team players and thinking, they're my heroes, but one day I want to be in that position. Yeah, um, and to be fair, Kyle's the answer is spot on. That's why I would say 100%, you need to enjoy it. And I think that's why Martin and his training was so special because everybody enjoyed it. You would you'd come home from school, you'd run home from school and you'd be delighted you're going to training. You'll have, we're only training Tuesday, Thursday and you'd be gutted Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and I think that's what was so special about it and why me and Callum enjoyed it so much and that's why we progressed because through enjoying football and obviously playing with Celtic as well. And Martin, just finally for you, obviously your role in the Youth Academy, is it made easier because you touched on it earlier on you can point to the boys and say, like, there's Kieran Tierney, there's Callum McGregor, there's James Forrest. They were where you are. You can be where they are. Absolutely. We use them so often uh, as examples of what, what they can achieve. It's, it's so important that the, the kids at the back dream big, because that's what the two boys did. And you can't be good at anything unless you love it. So it's important, as uh, once again, as, as Callum and KT touched on, you've got to love football, you've got to enjoy it. But it's, it's more of a message. That's more of a message for coaches as opposed to the children, because... They've got a huge responsibility to create a positive learning environment for the kids. I'm really glad you're finishing up, Paul, you know, mentioning about KT's report that you were going to mention uh, earlier, so I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Well, no, actually, I, now that that's good that you remind me, because <laughs> I, I was thinking maybe people might listen to this story and think, this guy's in charge of the Junior Academy, but Martin, you can you can tell us about the, the report that you, that you gave about Kieran, and, and maybe you didn't get it quite right. Yeah, it was um, it was probably a wee blip in, in terms of, of the report uh, in that it was a very positive report we did for KT. Uh, but he was playing seven-a-side football at the time and he was very much an out-and-out -out winger. He was he was never a defender at all. But we decided to put him back to to kind of left-sided defence, just at seven-a-side, um, just so he could have the game in front of him. And he, and he progressed. He, he, he grew in confidence and he demonstrated that ability that he still has like, up and down the pitch, which was remarkable. <coughs> but the one line that I really regret is that I stated, and it's still there in black and white, that when he moves to 11 a side football, he will never, ever be a left back, you know? <laughs> so, but I think it's good to laugh at yourself sometimes, you know, and, and, and uh, I've got that framed in my wall as well, just to remind myself, just don't get ahead of yourself at all, you know. So we can forgive you that, Martin, because of everything else you did in order to develop these, these two players. That's just about the, the end of, of this part of the, the night. Um, I'm sure, obviously, uh, everybody would, would like to show their appreciation for Callum, Martin and Kieran.